so when someone enters rehab or someone's like if somebody comes to you or whatever does that conversation ever come up as far as like uh diet and exercise every time now oh, so cool okay now everything so uh, i get people hitting me up like crazy on instagram about kratom and they mm. say i need to know more about kratom i, I gotta and they just they put all of their faith this is finally the answer mm. and you know what i give them right back no it's not the answer is you need a you need to go on a low carb diet of some sort. You can pick a keto diet. You can pick a low carb Atkins diet. You can pick a carnivore diet. But you need to do one of these diets because you need to cut the grains and the sugars that are causing you to get for that addiction, right? The other thing that I think is a good idea to cut, which a lot of people don't know, is dairy. Dairy is an opioid. Like it works like an opioid in the body to where we crave it again, right? So like eating, if we go to uh five guys right i'll still do it i'll i'm guilty of it i just went to five guys and i got the cheese last night we went to in and out we got double uh flying dutchman and i got the cheese for the most part though unless i go to those two places like i i pretty much cut the cheese <laughs> no pun intended hey he's been waiting all day to yeah, say yeah. that <laughs> pretty much cut the cheese out and um and for the most part cut out dairy except for once in a while when the cold brew is a little too bitter you know throw mm -hmm. a little half and half in there but just you know a little bit like less than i than i used to but a lot of these same foods will drive us to go back to the refrigerator right and so we want to avoid that I so had no idea it's not like cheese will drive you to take opioids but cheese will drive you to eat more cheese well and so will like ketchup i mean like if you you, if you mm -hmm. if you start mixing tastes that's going to that's going to give you cravings you, you need to have in, you need to have foods that don't have a lot of ingredients that's why i think two I, three maybe four ingredients at the most like not anything over that we we talked about dopamine fasting the other day mm -hmm. and i think where where you basically just shut everything off electronic yeah. in your life and you just be with yourself right. and and you don't stimulate dopamine in your brain at right. all and i think a carnivore diet is great like that as far as like stripping everything out of your diet for like maybe just a week, just to see that you can do mm -hmm. it, just to but know. People are a bunch of weak stuff. ass bitches, so they won't even try it for a day. Just try, just try. I'm telling you, just try some of the shit that we talk about on this podcast. Just try it for one day. Just, just get a feel for it. I tried it for two weeks because we were making a movie. Yeah, and you had, you know, you brought Doctor Baker up here, and mm -hmm. and I. You know, every time you do something for the movie, I want to make sure that we that we're yeah. giving it justice. We're right. doing the right thing. So I was like, well, I'm just going to go on his diet for for the two weeks before. Here we are, eleven months later, and I'm still on his diet. Right. You know, still on, still doing it. Yeah, so. switching over to carnivore diet was the first thing that actually made me like feel better as far as my back. Wow. It, it was the first thing that where I was like, this is drastically different. But it was the first time I had ever, well, I, I did a ketogenic diet a while back, but I was not in pain. So to do that after being in pain, it was the first thing that made me feel better. So I'm like, and it was the first time that I had completely cut out all like bullshit carbs. I was like, oh, this is, man, this is kind of awesome. But then I kind of got burnt out and started doing a vertical diet, which I, still continued the same like uh, progression. But I think that's totally fine, right? You're doing what? You're switching diets. You're not going from like a diet back to the standard American diet. Right. You know, you're going from one sort of technique to another technique that has been proven, you know, by a lot of people. You know, uh, Stan's vertical diet. Look at look at Stan. Look at Brian. Mm -hmm. Look at Half Thor. Look at these people getting stronger, getting leaner. Mm -hmm. You know that he's got countless. You know, it also is like a detox. You know, like you, uh, you don't yeah, have to was. do something forever. You know, so like you can just view it as like I'm, and I, I don't mean like you know detoxification really, but you're just uh, abstaining from eating some of those other foods for a while. Maybe your body heals, your gut heals. Who knows what the hell happens, but it's a great option for you. And the same thing is true with carbohydrates. Everyone should at some point have a point where they lower their carbohydrate intake a little bit if they've struggled with their diets in the past because you want to try to hit that reset button here and there. Yeah. Did you guys ever chase numbers as far as losing weight? Like, oh, yeah. Yeah, how much you want to weigh. Yeah. I always thought that was important. I actually thought that was important up Weighing until... Weighing yourself every day, I think it's crucial. And a lot of people say, don't do it, don't do it. Yeah. But I think it's... I think that's a bunch of bullshit. I think you should weigh yourself every day and you should make yourself accountable. If you want to weigh less, then weigh less. You know, like make the effort to weigh less. Yeah, but as far as like setting up a goal that's like maybe a little bit too far out of reach, like if you well, set a number on it and then you don't hit it, then, you know, it could lead to... I'll give you an example. Last time I was up here, I was like 185. And I'm like, oh, I need to get, I need to get to like below 181. That's where like, 
I could compete at that level if I wanted and be like 181. There's, there's no way to sell this. You can't sell this stuff softly. Like there's people that are listening to this right now and the summer just came and it just went, right? And they had another summer where they couldn't take their shirt off. Next year is going to be another summer for you where you can't take your shirt off. And the year after that, unless you start to make some changes and there's, there's just no, I can't sell it to you as like, oh yeah, you can kind of kind of do, do this and do that. No, you can't. If, if you want to have the body that you want and you want to feel proud of the body that you have and someone's like, Hey, we got a pool party and you're like, okay, fuck. Yeah. You know, you're excited. You're actually kind of excited. Like this is going to be feels great. It's completely different. The first year I take my shirt off and I don't feel fat, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It feels completely different if you're. But that takes, that takes a lot of effort. It's hard. That's not, that's not easy, but it also doesn't mean that you can't do it. It just means that you're going to have to put a really concentrated effort towards that and you might have to do some stuff that you've never done before. You might have to dig a little deeper than you ever have before. So it might just be healthier to say, like, just continue getting healthy and go ahead and keep jumping on the scale, but don't have any crazy expectation then. Well, in yeah. terms of, in terms of dropping, in terms of actually dropping weight and you, you know, you weigh 330, the first conversation that you have is, is like, okay, I'm fat. I need to lose some weight and some weight is just five pounds, 10 pounds. You take it a couple pounds at a time. But you also have this goal, you know what, it'd be great if I weighed under 300 pounds. It'd be great if I weighed 270 or so. Like for me with powerlifting, it was easy to kind of pick the weight classes and drop down. But I also kissed some of those other weights goodbye. When I was 330 and started to lose weight, I was like, I will never weigh that much ever again in my life. And then I got down to about, you know, 300 and I was like, okay, well, I, I'm going to compete in, the, in this weight class for a while. So I competed at 308. And I didn't, I didn't venture back up out of that. And I, I stayed around there for a while and I went to 290 and 270. And as I started losing, losing more weight, I started to say, okay, I'm not going to weigh 300 again. And then I would be, let's say I was down to like 270 and I'd say, I'm not going to be 290 again. I didn't say 280 because I know 270 and 280 are too close to each other. So I kept the relationship further and further away because I didn't want it to be, you know, if I had a couple bad days, I didn't want to be like back up over that weight and be depressed about it. So I kept the distance was about 20 pounds away. And I was like, I'll never weigh that again. I'll never weigh that again. I'll never weigh that again. I think it's, uh, you know, like you were asking if, uh, if I had a number and I said, I wanted to get down to like 181 cause I thought that was important. But when I came back up here, I was like 195 yesterday <laughs> or something. Right. And I'm like, man, I gained like 10 pounds since I, since I left here, but I, think I look a lot better and I'm a lot stronger, you know? So, mm -hmm. so it's like, while I say I care, I, I know that I'm not eating anything that's making me fat. So I'm just assuming that most of this is a positive weight gain, yeah. you know? But then also what's funny is um, when I travel, I seem to like gain weight too. So then when I weighed myself this morning, yesterday, obviously I was with Mark all day. So you mainly fast all day. Mm -hmm. That's what I did. And then I, we ate once at night. And then I weighed myself again this morning and I was, I was right back, back down to like one, you know, 189, yeah. mm -hmm. pretty close to where I was when I came back yeah. up here. Yeah. So uh, it was really only a couple pounds gained, but like, I think they were good pounds. So I'm not too worried about it anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was just thinking of like, from the perspective of somebody who wasn't a world record holding power lifter or somebody who isn't going for big, well, bigger ish numbers yeah. now, like somebody who is that person that can't take their shirt off, who's maybe just barely starting and they're, they're hearing this and they're just like, okay, yeah, I am X amount of weight. And by this time I want to be this weight. I just, I don't know. I just, I feel like I don't want to set someone up to, to like set them up uh, for failure. No, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, there's no other way to do it. They, and they might need to fail. They uh -oh. might need to fall flat on their face. So like, if they say, you know, I want to weigh this by like January, like that's actually a good thing. But I mean, they should, People should understand, like, you're not going to lose 30 pounds every month. You know, like, there might, if you're really big, you might lose 10, 20, 30 pounds in a month. And it's possible to lose pretty big amounts of weight, but that's not going to hold up forever. Um, I think it's good to attach some time to it because otherwise, um, you know, what, you, you should have some goals. Like, for me, I, I'd always look at, like, holidays and stuff, and I'd say, okay, Thanksgiving's around this time. Actually, this year, I wanted to weigh... Uh, 235 because I knew at some point in Thanksgiving somebody was going to make something and I was going to eat something out of the ordinary and I did that I I worked on it two weeks ahead of time to kind of make sure that I was there so it's like these these little things you're going to have to start to say okay by this time I mean you can use your relatives as like a weapon and say okay I'm going to see everybody you know even today today is the freaking eighth you still got time you're going to see your relatives coming up 
you got a handful of days in front of you. You could still drop a couple LBs and someone can say, hey, man, you're doing something different. And say, yeah, actually, you know what? I, I really want to make a big difference this year. I want to make a big change. I, I started this diet and I started this exercise program. And then someone's going to be like, fuck yeah, man, that's great. I hope it works out for you. Well, a lot of times what will happen is, well, what are you doing? I want to know. I want to get involved. Now you have a relative or a friend who's getting involved with you and it makes it that much easier yeah. to uh, talk about with people. They might you know? doubt you and say, oh, you've been talking about that for years and say, well, we'll I'll see you next year, you know? Yeah. We'll see. <laughs> Kind of, and, and have that be, you know, have that be another goal that you're not going it, to, it's hard. It is hard. It is really hard. It is really hard to truly change, uh, who, who you are, the, the bad habits that you have, <clears throat> the, the way that you appear. Um, it's, it is really, really hard. I mean, who, how many people are in your circle? Do you know who have really, truly changed? Are they just look and act and they are the same pretty much. Every time you see them, they're the same. They don't yeah. look any different. That's most of the people when you go into your but, gym. But, you yeah, know, yeah, they don't but, change. you're right. But every a lot of people are exercising, like especially all the people in our circle. They look the same all the time. Yeah. And you're like, how, like look at Stan Efforting. Stan Efforting kind of always looks better somehow. Yeah. <laughs> how is it possible? I mean, he's jacked out of his mind, right? He's, he's, he looks great. Mike O'Hearn is always like a better version of himself, right? Like he, he, sometimes he's bigger, sometimes he's leaner, sometimes he's this or he's that. But he's always dialed in, kind of. Yeah, he's always dialed in, and also that's a healthy thing for you to understand. If you're somebody that's, if you're somebody that's trying to lose weight, that, that you're gonna fluctuate. You're gonna go back up again. You're gonna weigh, you know, two thirty, and then you're gonna weigh two forty, and then you're gonna weigh, you know, two twenty five, and then you're gonna weigh two thirty five, and you're gonna go up and down and up and down. And some of that is just like lack of discipline, and some of that is just like. You, you just, it's going to be hard because you have to learn over a period of time to eventually eat a lot less food. Yeah. And, and when it's like, sometimes we'll, we'll eat a lot of less, a lot less food and our metabolism slows down. Right. And then you need, then you need to know like, okay, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm at too much of a calorie deficit and I need to eat some more food and come back up. Right. So there's both sides of the coin there. Like I did a keto diet. I wasn't eating enough protein and I got too, like, I got kind of skinny fat you know, cause I wasn't eating enough calories and enough protein and I was wearing myself down on cardio and I was sort of, uh, catabolizing myself and you know, I was in a catabolic state, not an anabolic state. And so you have to be able to recognize those things as well. But as you go through all this stuff, you really learn so much about your body. I don't think I knew anything about, I, I wasn't in touch or in tune with my weight or my body or how it fluctuated. And now I'm just so in tune with it that it feels good that I feel like I know what I'm doing. I feel like if I gain a little, you know, gain a little chub or something, I know yeah. how to get right rid of it. Or if I get a little, you know, a little too light, I know how to get rid of, you know, to get back up to where I need to be. I, I don't know how you work it out, but like I weigh myself multiple times a day. Like I usually weigh myself twice a day. I weigh myself just about every morning and I weigh myself just about every night. Very rarely am I like impacted by weighing myself though. I'm never like, you know, if I didn't lose the weight that I wanted, I'm not surprised by it. Because like I di I know I didn't do the stuff necessary to like ha to have the result, and I think people are just they're getting on the scale and they're like oh like I gained two pounds oh maybe it's just water no maybe it's just that you you don't have your shit together like it, it, it's not easy it's it's hard it's difficult because you're trying to change these habits that have been locked in you've been locked into these habits for a long time. And you have to treat yourself differently. It's the only way that you're ever going to get past it is you have to look in the mirror and say, okay, the thing that I need to get past is right there in front of me. It's me. I need to get past myself. I need to get over it myself. Same thing with drug addiction. Same thing with food addiction. Same thing with, with being fat. Same thing with being too skinny. Same thing with uh, the negative self-talk that you give yourself, the negative reinforcement we give ourselves every single day. You're going to have to figure out, okay, dumbass, stop, stop saying these ne this negative shit about yourself all the time and start to have some positive narrative towards, I'm going to start to make changes. Here's how I'm going to start to do things. Stop complaining about things that just are the way they are. There's no re like AA sucks, man. What's your other option, dickhead? Yeah, who cares? <laughs> Just go. It's what you have. So, so you know, get used to it. There's a bunch of losers there. 
Just, you know, they don't they don't well, understand. Guess me what? There. You're a loser too because you're there. My coach doesn't that's understand me. That's why I never played. Or what, right? Like you hear these things. It's like, man, that's that's some that's crazy talk. You're talking like a fucking crazy person right now. Mm -hmm. and, and people need to straighten up and they need, to, they need to get stronger. They need to get tougher with themselves. I think a lot of people are just are guilty of that. Like I'm guilty of that sometimes. So you I'm start, guilty of it. That's you, how I'm able to talk about it. You start blaming somebody and then you're like, wait a second. I'm actually blaming myself <laughs> like right now because I'm involved with this project too. And I'm trying to throw the blame on that guy because he's involved. And I want people to think he's the guy messing it up. But really the person messing it up is me. Or I'm part of the mess up too. And so by being accountable to things, I think that's really important to stay accountable to everything that you do or set out to do.